Bodacious. Let's go. What's up, brother? What's up, man? No, didn't what? catch it. Didn't catch the reference. No, it was a. Uh, that's a. It's going viral on TikTok right now. I thought you were about to go right into your story about how I'm so happy <laughs> to be here or something. No, but. no, I was. I was referencing a uh, sketch. Are you familiar? Uh, it's no, no ske- <laughs> sketch is a Twitch streamer. Oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I know who he there's is. There's like a there's a TikTok going around right now that's like it's like ladies go up to your man and go what's up brother <laughs> holding and, the finger up. holding the finger up <laughs> and see how they react. Obviously you're not my man but you are my guy. <laughs> yes sir. So I thought I would test it on you because uh, I can't do it the other way around. Well now when I see inevitably see this sketch clip it's probably no your phone's listening to this conversation right now so the next time you open oh, yeah. tiktok you're getting sketch clips. yeah first uh any tiktok <laughs> instagram reel whatever it is it's gonna yeah, be that exactly um hold on welcome into the toyota oh, lounge oh, driven oh. by your front range toyota stores toyota is the official vehicle of dmvr shout out to the toyota chat what is up everyone we had day four of practice today we'll get into all that we are presented by illegal Pete's. everyone's go to spot for burritos buddies and beers but first, you have an update for us. Yeah. First of all, I want to say shout out to everyone who hit me with their remedies. <laughs> yeah. um, I, was, uh, I was expecting to get some good ones, and I got some great ones. Best remedy I got was somebody offered me uh, to bring me what they called uh, Turkish menthol rocks. Interesting. That was a friend of the program that you know well. Um, and, uh, I thought that was the best one. And they were like, yeah, I just can't get pulled over while I'm driving with these. Cause they absolutely <laughs> look like crack. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, I got a couple other things. Someone else told me to do one of those ear candles. Uh huh. Tried that. Nothing. No. Uh, so I did go to the doctor today, but this is why Jake, I don't like going to the doctor. Okay. So go to the doctor. It's like a quick, easy thing. I was like, man. I don't know why I waited so long to do this. Uh-huh. This was simple. They're like, we sent your, we prescribed you like, you know, some, some shit, uh, some drugs that'll get you fixed. Um, so I go over to the pharmacy. I wait because I know they always take longer than they say. I wait, go over to the pharmacy. I'm like, Hey, uh, I have a prescription, Ryan Konigsberg, blah, blah, blah. They're like, okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, we don't have it. I'm like, I, well, they said they sent it here. You're like, I don't know. They're like, well, you're just going to have to call them and have them send it again. I'm like, all right, whatever. So I call, no answer. Call, no answer. Call, no answer. Call, no answer. Uh huh. Finally get through. I'm like, hey, you guys didn't send the prescription? They're like, no, we did for sure. I'm like, all right, well, they're saying you didn't. They're like, okay, well, we'll resend it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so then they resend it. What do they say? They're like, all right, well, it's going to take us 20 minutes to, to do that, which I don't know if any of you guys work in pharmacies. How? Why? Can't you just go in the back, grab the thing, and give it to me? It blows my mind, bro. I don't know. I'm, I'm open to hearing why. Anyways, I wait another 20 minutes. Now I've been at this pharmacy for like an hour. Yeah. I get it, pack it up, go home, find it. I'm like, all right, let's get, let's get this relief. Let's get this sweet relief. Pop these pills. <laughs> uh-huh. I open the bottle. I am literally one inch from putting this thing in my mouth. I look down at the bottle. I, they gave me something I was allergic to. Whoa. And I told them. And I told them, I said, are you having any allergies? I said, yes, penicillin. They said, okay, cool. We'll give you the other one. Nope. They were trying to kill me. That is crazy. The ops are everywhere. So I call them back. No answer, no answer, no answer, no answer, no answer, no answer. <laughs> call them back. I'm like, yo, you guys prescribed me something I literally told you I was allergic to. They're like, oh, no, this is like a different blend. You're probably not allergic to it. I was like... <laughs> Off. <laughs> like, send me what you said you were going to send me when I told you I was allergic right. to that. They're like, all right, we will. I was like, also, throw me some money for this prescription that I just had to pay for that I can't use or else I'll die. Uh huh. I probably won't die. Just get like hives. <laughs> but still, that's why going to the doctor is such a pain in the ass. That is crazy. Yes. They really tried to kill you. They really tried to kill me unbelievable and i wouldn't have noticed if they didn't tell me i remember him telling me like it's going to be two the first day then one for the next five days Mm -hmm. and then i looked and it was like two per day every day and i was like that doesn't add up and i looked yep sure enough wow takes them 20 minutes to grab the wrong medicine well they sent the it was the doctor's fault damn it doctor yeah big doctor (laughs) 
Gonna have to have some words with that guy. For real. Okay. Oh, you made it though. I did. I'm, 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 I'm relieved you're here. If I didn't look, I might have just been sitting here all of a sudden, like <laughs> just hives. Yeah, next thing you know, your throat like swells up yeah. and you're like dealing with a situation. Yeah, here. we could we have had a serious have situation. Oh, man. Thank goodness. Well, we missed you at football today. I missed you guys too, but I listened to the chat. We're like, go to the fucking doctor, and I went. <laughs> We're also glad you did that. Um, all right, let's get to it. We'll talk about... We didn't talk about this yesterday. We found out last night, but Zay Weaver will have a pro day tomorrow. We'll get to that. Uh, the Big 12 Mexico plans have been delayed. Don't know what that is? Don't worry. We'll explain that. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> um, project, predicting every college game day site in 2024. 247 put out a list. We'll get to that also. What we learned from practice, what was said on the podium, but we start today here... With Trevor Woods, a player who has been very divisive in this community yes. for some reason. But um, the headline today, basically the biggest thing to come out of press conferences, Coach, uh, Coach Hart said that Trevor and Levante Bentley are pretty much his starting linebackers right now. Uh-huh. What do you think about that? I think that's uh, not surprising in the slightest. Mm -hmm. And... Let me start this by saying I'm heavily on team uh, Jalen Wester. Mm -hmm. I really like Jalen yeah. Wester. Um, I'm curious, did Coach Hart talk at all about what position he's playing? Is he playing Levante Bentley's position so he has to beat him out? Or is he playing Trevor Woods' position he has to beat him out? Um, he did not. I asked him, I got to ask him about Jalen. It was the last question that he took. Um, he just talked about really what kind of player he is and what he's brought to the team since he showed up in February, but we didn't get any of the finer details. Um, that's just a personal gripe for me from today's pr press conferences. What? We didn't get very many, very much details. A lot of like, how's what, Boulder? What's it like working <laughs> under Coach Livingston? Uh, okay. Do you well, guys pick not, each other's brains? That's not bad. That's not bad. I'll, I'll take that working with Coach Livingston. I, I mean, everyone was asked that today, though. It's like, okay, we get it. He's the DC. Uh, yeah, someone's doing a story on him. So they had to ask Pro everyone. But, like, it was different people asking about Coach Livingston. I don't know. Anyways. Um, no, we did not okay. hear exactly which position Jalen Wester is playing or what the deal is with any of the other linebackers, really. See, like, comments like this are just so uh, far removed from the truth. This drives me crazy. Uh, the comment says, the Trevor Woods is horrible. This shows Hart will be fired or demoted soon. First of all, Co Coach Prime is not firing or demoting <laughs> Coach Hart. Yes. Um, second of all, Coach Prime isn't just like, if Coach Prime vehemently disagreed with Coach Hart, he would step in. Yes. Coach Prime has a hand in everything. Yeah. He has a say in everything. He is the head guy. Mm-hmm. He's in charge. He's the captain of this ship. Yes. So if you're saying that Coach Hart doesn't know ball, which is asinine, you're also saying that Coach Prime doesn't know ball, mm -hmm. which I know you know is asinine. So here's what you got to understand about Trevor Woods. He is an incredibly, incredibly instinctual football player. Yes. And because of that, Coaches are always going to love him. Mm -hmm. He plays smart. He has a super high football IQ. And he has, I would say, at least for the college game, elite football instincts. Yes. And so when coaches are evaluating their players in practice, those are the things that pop off. Mm -hmm. uh, not to say he couldn't do this, but like a player, let's just say uh, Trevor Woods gets matched up on a running back and they get him with a wheel route and he gets burned. Whereas another player on the same play makes like a diving breakup. That's great. That's amazing. But let's just say on the very next play, it's simply, uh, you know, outside zone. And Trevor Woods scans, 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 gets out on the edge of, you know, the, uh, of the defense and goes and makes the play. Mm-hmm. Whereas the other linebacker tries to shoot a gap, ends up getting swallowed up in the play, and the running back breaks to the outside. The diving breakup, it doesn't give you the plus that the uh, missed gap 
cancels out with the minus, meaning now you're at negative one, mm -hmm. whereas Trevor's may be at even. And that's a very loose way of explaining it. But the point is coaches have to go with what they trust. And so I think by putting Trevor in this position, which again, we are a long, long, long ways away from a true depth chart for week one. Mm -hmm. But I think the reason why Trevor is being put in this position is because he plays the right way. He's in the right place. He makes the right play more often than not. And even if in the back of his head, Coach Hart is saying, I want someone else to start there in a perfect world. He's saying the way to get them there is by showing them, if you can do all these things that Trevor can do and that other stuff that I know you can do, that's when I'm going to trust you to put you in this position. So you got to understand why coaches do things and why Trevor is such an easy player for coaches to love. It's like you were there. <clears throat> it's basically <laughs> kind of what Coach Hart said today. Okay. It's like last year we had guys who could defend the run and we had guys who could defend the pass. We didn't really have too many guys who could do both really well. I think that's pretty evident. I don't think anyone would argue against that. And they brought in some players, and they were very close to bringing in a blue chipper at this position too. Let's not forget that before DJ Lundy withdrew from the portal and went back to FSU. So a lot of things have changed. Also, all these new players are coming in. Like, you got to like... You don't get handed a spot right away, even if you're a four-star transfer or whatever. You got to earn your spot. You got to earn your place amongst your teammates with your coaches. Like, this doesn't just happen right away. Go back to this time last year. I mean, how many starters did we have playing right now this time last year? Not very many. Yeah, for sure. So a lot of these things will work themselves out, for one. Um, and again, Coach Hart touched on all this. He was asked about what Coach Prime said about bringing in more linebackers too, and we'll get to that. But also, Trevor Woods is like a good football player. You don't change positions mid-season and do it well by being a bad football player. Like, he understands the game. He knows where he's supposed to be. And he was able to change positions, really just step into a new starting position mm -hmm. closer to the line of scrimmage without, like, hardly any hiccups. Yeah, could he have been better? For sure. Is he the best linebacker in the country? No. I don't think anyone's arguing that. No one is. But he's a veteran, he's a smart football player, and he's trusted by his teammates and his coaches. What, and what I don't understand is every time you or I say something nice about Trevor Woods, uh, all these things get thrown at Oh, you only like him because of this. You only it's like crazy. him because of that. You have a soft spot for him because he was on the 1-11 and 11 team. But it's like... Okay, well, guess what? We have no bearing on the decision <laughs> right. as to why he's being named a starter right now. So does Coach Hart have a soft spot for Trevor Woods because he was on the 1-11 and 11 team? I surely doubt it. <laughs> Coach Hart just likes Trevor Woods as a football player. Mm -hmm. And so it's, there's no ulterior motives. There's no, like, all of these guys, every single person that is a coach in the program is trying to do the best thing for the program. And again, there's no games right now. Uh -huh. So that doesn't even matter. But... Every decision that is made, every depth chart that comes out, every player that plays on Saturdays, everyone's just trying to win and do what's best for the program. And so there's no, like, funny business going on here. <laughs> yeah. Coach, and you, you can't possibly think that you know ball more than Coach Hart or Coach Prime. <laughs> yes. So, like, I just don't understand why the, uh, the outrage and the uproar every time something like this comes out. You got to put some trust in the people who are literally there every single day yes. seeing this stuff over a far less trained eye only getting to see really one thing a week and then maybe a couple clips in the, in the background of a, of a well-off video. Definitely, man. <clears throat> and let's not forget, this is day four of practices. Four out of 15 for the spring. We are 10% through how many practices we're going to have before we even play a game. And then that starts a whole other kind of season, of course, but just like series of events at practice and lineup changes and everything that goes on there. So we're not even close to having a starting lineup. Um, you know, the guys who are new haven't really settled fully in yet. They, who knows if they even know the full defense at this point, who knows if anyone knows the full defense at this point. Yep. 
So there's a lot of stuff that's going to get worked out and ironed out these next few months as we go all the way through August even. It's, we're far from done. So let's stop the outrage. It's outrageous. And if you're saying you watch the games and he sucks, well, then what is that saying about the players that he's playing over? That's another good point. Now, personally, I don't think any of that's true. Mm -hmm. I think he's good. Yeah. I think he's solid. I think he's strong. And I think that for all the reasons that I described, he is very easy for a coach to gravitate towards. And it's one of the reasons why he's made it this far in his career. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I, I just don't understand <clears throat> for everyone saying Coach Hart's not the guy or this, that, or the other. Like, to me, that means you're saying that you actually think that you know better than him. Yeah, I mean... And the, Coach Hart. The Coach Hart kind of discourse or whatever right now is even crazier to me than the Trevor Woods stuff. I agree. I mean, literally, I said it earlier in this segment. They got a commitment from a player who would have been a blue chip player at the position in DJ Lundy. Mm -hmm. He decided to withdraw from the portal. That is not Coach Hart's fault. He did his job. He got him to commit. Like, he did all he could. Because DJ wanted to go back to Florida State, there's no knock on him. Florida State backed up the Brinks truck. Exactly. Like, you can't control that. And Coach Prime, again, he said, we're probably going to look at linebacker. He said that last or two weeks ago. Coach Hart was asked about that today. We can get to the rest of it, but I don't. it's just insane to me that we're talking about firing Coach Hart and Trevor Woods doesn't deserve to be on the field at all. Yeah, it's wild. and someone in the chat said, yes, we do know better. You should apply for the position. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure Coach Prime will uh, really consider uh, that resume there. I really forget how spicy our cake can be on podcast sometimes. <laughs> I forget that he doesn't take <laughs> shit. <laughs> and, and it's I, really good. It's fun. Just, I like it. I just don't, like, people get so crazy with this stuff. Um, like, all of these decisions are so well thought out. Mm -hmm. By people that... Meetings, conversations. Yeah, by people who coach these players every single day. And have dedicated their entire life to this craft. Yes. They know this, these players more than anyone else. I don't care how much well-off you watch, how much you're on Twitter. You're not going to know this team more than these coaches. Literally, we don't even have a chance in hell of coming within 5% of the knowledge that they have about this. Yes. Bye, dog. Lay it down, Yaya. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. <clears throat> All right. Shout out to... Our wonderful new friends over at Toyota. Toyota trucks have been a part of Toyota's DNA for generations. Toyota has built durable legends, destined for greatness and perfect for Colorado. Not just Colorado, but wherever you are. Toyota, probably the car for you. Uh, you can go the sporty option with like a Supra. You can go the reliable option with the Corolla. A uh, little hybrid action. Also, just get the 4Runner, which is like America's favorite car at this point. I want the 4Runner so bad. Yeah. All white. Black rims. The one from the video? <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> so I used to work for a dealership uh -huh. selling cars. Toyotas with 300K miles never lost their value. That's how good of a car it is. Like, they're incredibly good. Yeah, dude. I, I told them yesterday. I haven't had a single problem with my, uh, with my Toyota in years. They're the best. They're practically uh, the most re reliable cars out on the road. Visit your front range Toyota stores at a location near you. Auto Nation Toyota, Arapahoe and Centennial, Corwin Toyota in Boulder, Groove Toyota in Littleton, Mountain States Toyota in Denver, Stevenson Toyota East in Aurora, and Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. Toyota is a proud partner of CU Athletics and the official vehicle of DNVR. Uh, you want to shout out Game Time? Yes, sir. Game Time. You guys know about Game Time. Best possible place to get last minute tickets or any tickets, really. <clears throat> but the best time to go to game time is the last minute. You can roll up to the stadium, have a drink at the closest bar, wait until five minutes before the game tips or puck drop or kickoff, whatever it is, uh, and get the best possible deals. And the best part is game time, they'll just immediately transfer them right to the app. It's not like you have to go through some other app and download it. Like You're just going to get these things right on your phone uh, <clears throat> and pop right into the game. Scan your QR code and boom, you're in. Uh, so shout out to game time. And the, even better... Use the code BUFFS buffs to get a new uh, to get when you get a new account. 
and you'll get $20 off your first purchase from Game Time. So hit up our friends over at Game Time. The goats. Um, wow. All right. What? Just uh, the chat today. Yeah, they're crazy. It's something. All right. Uh, let's get to press conferences. We had Coach Hart. We had Levante Bentley. We had Trevor Woods. Um, the players, uh, they didn't share too much. Mostly just talking about, you know, what it's been like for them recently and over the last year or so. But Coach Hart, um, I think, really gave out some good nuggets today. He started off on fire like he always does. <laughs> Walks up to the uh, press conference uh, area, already talking, says it's that time of year again. Fellas, we back in here. <laughs> Ready to capitalize on what we did last year and pack the stadium again, especially the student section. If y'all can get there, I know you already are here two hours early, maybe four hours earlier. <laughs> it makes me feel good when I go out there and do my stretch. Um, so student section, when you all come out there to set, uh, see coach, uh, make it feel good. We appreciate you. I think uh, I think he's going to have to talk to the organizers at Folsom Field because I don't think they open the gates four hours <laughs> they early. They definitely do not. <laughs> um, all right. He was asked uh, how he feels about the roster this time, right now, compared to this time last year. Um, and if, they, if he feels, you know, the coaches are more settled too. He said, anytime you spend more than one year with each other, you get a little bit more comfortable. You understand how the kids learn. You understand how the coaches coach. I've been with Prime for so long, I already know what he expects. But when everybody else gets on board, things move a lot smoother. That's what you're seeing. There's confidence in what we did last year. Of course, that's not what we, how we wanted to end, uh, but it's something to build on. We're excited about this year. The guys that we have coming in and the guys who came back have been developing and getting better. This spring game, man, you're going to see some really good action. Love to hear it. I keep my expectations very low for spring games in general. <laughs> yeah. Like, I already know Coach Prime is going to deliver on the uh, pomp and circumstance. Mm-hmm. And everything that he can control, but spring games in general are very low key. Usually, on the action side of things. Yes, I'm excited to you know <clears throat> just watch some players. We got some good stuff last year, though. We had a, a 99 yard Montana Limonius Craig touchdown. Mm -hmm. What um, was that worth? What's that? What was that worth? <laughs> I don't know. That was the highlight of the day, at least. It did get people to cheer. <laughs> yeah. Um, we had a Trevor, or we had a uh, a Travis Hunter touchdown. Yeah, we that everyone a, was accusing, everyone was saying that the defense was told not to try. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh my God, yes. Remember Mikey Harrison scored a touchdown? Love it. That's uh, probably still when he was a wide receiver. That was still when he was a wide receiver. That's about it. I, uh, no, I, I, I made this comment last year, and I think it's better now just because Coach Prime knows how to make it a show. But I said I always compare uh, the spring game to eggnog. <laughs> Comes around once a year. You're like, oh, man, it's the holiday season. I'm ready for some eggnog. <laughs> and then you actually get a glass of eggnog, and you're yep. like, all right, I'm good till next year. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect analogy. <laughs> Um, Coach Hart was asked about what Coach Prime said about looking for another linebacker. He was asked, do you want another linebacker? He goes, well, you know, the thing about Coach Prime is he's always pushing the envelope to get better, which I love. The linebackers that we have right now, if you all remember last year, I talked about we had guys that were good at the run and some were good at the pass, but we didn't really have a guy that was good at both, right? So this year coming into it, they've developed and gotten better. But we had the pads on today. Today was the first day of... Uh, hitting, not as physical as you want to, but for me, it was a good evaluation of guys good at run and pass. That makes sense. So that's what I'm looking for, the group I have um, who wants to push the envelope and create competition, which I love the more competition you create. They don't sleep well. I sleep good. I like that. That's my philosophy. Oh, yeah. Then he said, so if we bring in another guy, we have been looking, um, and we have some guys kind of figured out that we'd like to go after if that's the case. All right. Um, but yeah, said they're mostly just focusing on what's in house right now, which pretty obvious. That's what they should be doing. Um, just to stoke the flames one more time. What yeah, was his quote it. about Trevor and the transfer portal? Um, I can get to that. Okay. 
Um, okay. So he was asked about Trevor's uh, position, obviously, because he changed positions during the middle of the year last year. So he said that was some way to talk about to Trevor was to make sure he understood his role going forward and that he would know how much he means to us because you have the portal these days, right? And a guy can jump in there and go and do some things, and we didn't want to lose Trevor. We think he's a great kid, great ass- asset, great teammate, and he's not going to do anything but make us better in that linebacker room. So why hate? It blows my mind, bro. And this will probably be my last point on this, but do you remember around this time last year when Coach Prime had the, the team – we had oh this that was the spring game right the team we had out there today that was right after the, the spring team game that we will, we will have mm-hmm. uh, in Texas yep right after the spring game do you remember what he said like a little bit later in that press conference first it was on them now it's on me and he said Trevor Woods he's one we want to keep mm-hmm. so that's back to back years now that this yeah. coaching staff has you know told plenty of people they don't want to keep them. That re-recruited him, basically. Yes, has, has tried to keep Trevor around. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's like they think he's funny? <laughs> I don't know. Do you think he's a good cook or something? <laughs> he's back there with Chef Solomon? He's not. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even good at giving words of the day. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> he's just good at football. <laughs> yeah. And they really like having him around. So, it's it's, yeah, I don't know. I would trust them over anyone else. So I asked Coach Hart about Jalen after that. Jalen Wester. He said he's like the Energizer Bunny out there. He's just twitching and moving around. I think he drinks more coffee than me or my grandmother. Um, I love Jalen, man. I think he's going to get better. I think he's going to be an asset. He's still competing to get on the field and start. I think what Bentley and Trevor have done is putting them still in the front running. No decisions have been made yet, but I do like what I see but Jalen is really pushing, and I can't wait to see him on the field on Thursday. End of the press conference. <clears throat> like I said before, I'm really excited about Jalen Wester. Uh, I'm curious. I wish we could have found out more about how Coach Hart sees these linebackers and who he sees at what position. Mm-hmm. Um, but really excited about Jalen. I, I, I think I was like one of the first people that was – really stoked about that uh, transfer Mm -hmm. turned on his tape and the funny thing is the number one word i that stuck stuck out to me when i watched jalen wester was instinct yeah and i said that about him you know the next day after he transferred or whatever um and it's because that's just such a valuable asset at that position for whatever reason maybe he's just taking a little longer to settle in you know sure um last year we had guys take months to get used to the altitude He's four practices in. Yeah, there's a million reasons as to what you know why uh, maybe he hasn't cracked the starting lineup yet or the perceived starting lineup. Yes. Um, but I just don't want it to be like people, you know, me defending Trevor Woods against just way over the top what I would say is disrespect of his game mm-hmm. has nothing to do with me thinking he should start or – me not liking Jalen Wester. I really like Jalen Wester a lot. I'm super high on his game. And I also think you guys should keep in the mind that I think if I were to say any position that they're going to add from the portal in the spring transfer portal, I would pick linebacker. Yep. Every time we've been asked that the last few weeks, that's the first position we named. Yes. And there's a reason for that. So um, a lot of different things at play there. Uh, Yeah. yeah. Scroll up in the comments a bit for me. Um, Keep going. Keep going. Uh, stop. Star that one from Go Bucks right there. We'll get to that in a second. Go no, Bucks. Go Bucks. The That's orange one. Giant orange G. We will get to that in just a second. Uh, so Trevor took the podium after Coach Hart. Um, first question was basically, well, Coach Hart just broke down like you had a decision um, and you know changing positions and all that. Trevor said, I wasn't sure if I wanted to play linebacker or safety. I was kind of in between. I want to be able to do both. And I mean, they kind of told me there's no thought of uh, going or anything like that, meaning leaving the portal. He wasn't thinking about leaving. He wanted to play for this team, this coaching staff. 
Uh, he was asked, how much did you learn from last season, those reps at linebacker? He said, I got baptized by fire. Um, I wasn't even in the linebackers room, you know. I was just starting with the safeties, and I would go play linebacker. I'm learning a lot right now, and those games really help based um, on what I saw on the field. He was asked, do you think you'll play some safety? He said, I mean, if things happen, uh, like they told me, just to be ready for it all. Um, he said something that he prides himself on is just being ready. He was asked about his comfort level at linebacker. He said, I'm pretty comfortable. Um, when you're safety, I like playing in the box, but usually you're the extra guy. Um, they're not really calling on you as much, um, and you're really helping line people up as opposed to being in the box. But he said, I'm just learning to play with leverage and all that kind of stuff just to make it easier on myself this off season." Um, it's been a challenge, not just trying to mentally learn into a new position, but also maybe, maybe physically trying to change your body a little bit as well. He said he's trying to throw on weight. He said he lost a few pounds, but he's uh, at like 210 right now. He's trying to add another 5 to 10 before the season starts. Of course, doesn't want it to be bad weight. Uh, um, he was asked about Coach Livingston. Um, he said he's keeping it simple. He's an NFL guy. He's real relaxed. Um, again, likes to keep it simple. I really like uh, Coach Livingston's on-field demeanor. Mm -hmm. I think that th there's always a pros and cons of everything, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you've got the uh, – oh, gosh, what was uh, – the Buffs had a guy named Tyson Summers mm -hmm. as their defensive coordinator under Mel Tucker, and he was, like, just going crazy every time. Like, full-on – southern twang just screaming at the players all the time and like you know they, they, he, he kind of got him riled up that was great mm -hmm. then like i think coach livingston just gives everyone this sense of calm the sense of confidence the mm -hmm. sense of like just go out there and handle business yep rather than like jumping up and down screaming and like i said both of them have their uh, their pros and cons but um i like the way that everyone pretty much everyone talks about how he's chill, how he's calm. Yes. Uh, and I think it's because it, it stands out to them. And I think it depends on the team, but on Saturdays it can be really helpful when your coaching staff grounds you. Mm -hmm. And the, if you're the right type of team, you shouldn't need your coach to hype you up. Definitely. Like you guys should hype each other up. You just being on the field on a Saturday should be what hypes you up. Having your coach, you know, if you make a bad play or, you know, something goes wrong, broken coverage, you come to the sidelines and they're like, okay, look, here – Here's what went wrong. Mm -hmm. We're not going to let it happen again. Here's what we're going to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think this is a good personality fit. And again, one of the reasons why Coach Prime probably spent so much time trying to get this right is how can he fit the personality of the coach or the personality of the team and their skill sets and all of that, their scheme. Uh, and I think that it was very purposeful by Coach Prime to get this kind of uh, low-key, chill, demeanored coach. 100% agree. Uh, the thing I think of when I think of him and just, you know, I saw him on the field at Pro Days two weeks ago and uh, we got to talk to him at the podium and just those, you know, brief interactions, just a quiet confidence with him. Um, I don't even know if quiet's the right word, just like a, a reserved confidence almost. Like you've got Coach Prime type of confidence, you know, where he can yeah. be a little flashy, kind of like let you know about it. But Coach Livingston's so confident, I think, within himself and with how much he's learned in his time. Uh, I mean, he's only 30, what, 36, 35, I think he is, yep. but he's already coached at all these different levels, all these different positions. Uh, he, he was a scout. Like, he just been there and done that, you know? Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, there's different ways of um, displaying confidence, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I, you know, <laughs> I, t I t lean towards Coach Prime's style. Sure. But uh, I understand, you know, the, you know, not everyone can uh, can be Coach Prime. No one can be Coach Prime. Definitely. Uh, Stevie Davey in the Toyota chat says, this is fun. This is fun, actually, talking about football on the show again. <laughs> I like to say, you know, it's got the blood flowing yeah, a little bit. Great. We're, we're working today, and um, I'll let you finish. I have one last point to make on okay. this whole thing. Um, I think this is really the last thing from Trevor here. I asked him, you know, can you compare right now to, you know, last year? And he said, it's more normal Last year, everyone was just thrown together. This year, obviously, we lost some guys, and we still are going to bring some guys in. Um, but most of the team was still here last year. So we've all played with each other. We've worked out with each other, gone to events together, you know, 
chemistry is just going to go up all the time. Um, yeah, it's evident just watching them interact. Great. Uh, I'm going to say this, and then I guess we'll just tie a bow on the whole Trevor Woods thing with mm -hmm. ending his press conference. I saw a couple of people in the comments say, oh, you can't, no one can criticize anything about this team without being labeled a hater or anything like that. And oh, someone else said, like, if they're looking in the portal, do, does, shouldn't that tell you everything you need to know about these guys? And here's what I'll say. I think there's a very big difference between saying something along the lines of, like, I understand why they like Trevor, but I think we can upgrade that position, mm -hmm. which would be a great take. Yeah. And saying Coach Hart should be fired if he thinks Trevor Woods is a starter. <laughs> There's such a wide gap there. <laughs> yes. And so you can criticize and you can give your opinions on places and positions that you think the team needs to upgrade. Everyone does. We do it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but th I always talk about this, how I think in today's society, we're so engaged. We have engagement brain, which is just like, ah, if I crank this take up just a little bit more, yeah. you get more engagement, whether it's from us sitting here reading your comments, right. from other people in the chat responding to, people on Twitter wanting more likes and retweets. So it's like, instead of just saying like, yeah, Trevor's solid, but I would love to see us get a game changer at that position. <laughs> right. Like, great take. Love that. Yes. Or saying, Trevor Woods can't play. He sucks. What are these coaches seeing? They're idiots. Now that take is out of line. Yes. So... I just think we, we, we should be able to have like real discussions here uh, without trying to put people down to, to make a point. And I, well, we've accomplished that at times, I think, too. I, when we get asked about, you know, which positions would you improve in the portal? I think that's at least our opportunity to actually share those opinions and yeah. thoughts in a constructive manner. When we did the starting lineups, I feel like that was kind of a that was a whole show of basically doing that of stating where we think or who we think is the best at each position, where they could get better at that position and who's in the competition at that position. Yes. yes. So there's, there's nuance to be had when you discuss these things. Totally. And we're in, we're in a long form format here. Yes. We, you know, we have an hour to talk. You guys have, you know, the chat rolling. Um, we don't have to do the like quick unlayered, no nuanced right. ta hot takes. Yes. Um, okay, Levante Bentley, I don't mean to just gloss over him, but um, just a lot of talk about, you know, he's an older player. This is his last year in college type of thing. So yeah, all of these are up on our YouTube if you want to go check them out also. Um, but his thoughts coming off of last year, really his first year starting in college football and where he's at physically, he said, I feel great uh, each and every year, just getting better. Uh, bringing everything together, what I learned through past years, and just trying to put it all together for this last ride. He says, I'm blessed still to still be playing this game and trying to get to the league. That's my goal. Uh, but I feel great out here, and the guys are getting better each and every day. Um, what else do we got? Oh, that's right. That comment I told you about. Throw that up. My guy Scott Proctor asked this question. Yes. Um, great, uh, great article by uh, Scott Proctor on Ben Boozy today. Mm -hmm. They're all real They're names. They're all real names. <laughs> <laughs> no, Scott's tight. I was hanging out with him a bit after uh, press conferences today. We were chatting it up. I was giving him the 411 on Trevor Woods. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I'm trying to find the exact quote. But Scott asked him, you know, what's it like playing with this new D-line, basically, because last year we had an undersized defensive line, and we've talked about this a lot on this show, that the linebackers kind of didn't stand a chance because defensive or uh, the offensive lines that they were playing against were just getting to the second level so quick because there was no resistance on that front line on Colorado's defense. So Bent was asked about that. Um, I'm just going to find the tweet here. I can't find the quote. He said, now I can just go downhill and fill the gaps. It feels great. we got some good guys in front of me who can fill their gaps. He just sounds much more confident in the front line in front of him now. And, again, we've talked about it on this show. I don't think it can be overstated just how much of an impact that's going to have on this defense and how much, not just better, but just how much better it's going to flow. Like, things are going to look faster. Um, things are going to look better in terms of just – productivity in terms of getting to the backfield 
Uh, it's just all, it's totally game changing when you have a defensive line who is not constantly giving ground, who is able to actually penetrate, get TFLs, get sacks, and create pressure. Yeah, and honestly, I think it was a, a mix of both. Uh, I think there were times where the linebackers let down the defensive line. I think there was times where the defensive line let down the linebackers last year. Um, I would probably make the argument that the linebackers let the defensive line down more than the other way around. But a rising tide lifts all boats. Yep. So they're better on the defensive line this year. They're better at linebacker. I think you'll see a lot of things in the defense just look like they make sense. There was times last year where, like, I don't know, they're misaligned. Mm-hmm. This guy's jumping the wrong guy. Just little things. Now, that was miles ahead of the year before. I remember <laughs> I remember you did a film room. Why can't Colorado stop the run? And it was painful. This was from the 2020 22 season. Two season. It's still on the DMBR.com yeah, if you want to go read it. If you want to see how a team can be terrible at stopping the run, go watch that. Um, but last year was leaps and bounds ahead of that. There were still times like the Oregon game where they just couldn't get stops in, in the run game. Mm-hmm. Um, this year will be, I think, another huge step ahead of where they were last year. Uh, and it is. Those, the defensive line and the linebackers have to work together. Uh, and both of them, you know, it's, it's, this is what makes football the, the ultimate team sport. Everyone has to do their job for, a, you know, a defense to succeed, for anyone to succeed. Definitely. Nailed it. I want to... Um, just quickly read you the, a, a small excerpt from Scott's article on yeah. uh, coloradoan.com yep. if you guys want to go read it, or you can just go check out his Twitter, um, and he's got the link there. But his lead here says, uh, Ben Boozy was asked a question by Deion Sanders that made the Naples, Florida native stop and think for a second. Quote, why should I give you this opportunity? It's Coach Prime talking to Ben Boozy. And if you remember when – this commitment happened. I said, I have a feeling that this is like coach prime. Something spoke to him about Ben. So here's what Ben told coach prime. I told him I've been going up this hill and I'm headed to the top of it. But right as I reach the top, I run to the side of it and slide right back down. I'll go back up again, doing so good and go right back down. According to Ben, Coach Prime responded, I'm glad you said that because sometimes we just need that little extra push to get us over the hill. He said, Coach Prime telling Ben, this is why I'm here. In his words, he's like, I pick one kid from the city, the 239, Naples, Florida, or Fort Myers area, and you're my one kid this year. Coach Prime talked to a kid who has made mistakes in his life Mm -hmm. and said, why should I give you this opportunity? And heard an answer that spoke to him and and thought to himself, man, this kid's climbing the mountain, climbing the mountain, and for whatever reason, just when he gets close to the top, Coach Prime, a person who, no matter what any hater will tell you, deeply cares about other humans, realizes that his power, his calling, is to find people like that and get behind them and push them over the hill. Yep. Uh, And so I just think it's such a great little anecdote there from Scott to as to who Coach Prime is and why he is the way he is and why uh, certain people in his life um, are – he he feels, I, w- I think he would agree with me on this, like sent to him for a reason. Mm-hmm. And he thinks that he can help them. And uh, that's really all he ever wants to do is, uh, you know, help people get over the mountaintop. I absolutely love that. Shout out Scott. Go check that out. Uh, give him a follow on Twitter as well. Yeah, great stuff from Scott. Um, last thing. Uh, of course, we met up with Neely. We shot a takeaways video. If you haven't already watched it, uh, it's on Twitter. It's on YouTube. But uh, basically what Unk said, I mean, something we talked about last week was every single day was a great day of practice, right? And how Coach Prime was so encouraged by what he saw that first week. Well, you come back, everyone's on time. We talked about that yesterday. But day four was on par. It was at that level. Love to hear it. So that's just great news all around. Um, Neely said that Shiloh, player of the day, flying around. Uh, they had the pads on today. They were hitting helmets. They were knocking shoulder pads. And Shiloh, of course, took it a bit oh, yeah. over the top of it, maybe, at times. Is that Shiloh Sanders music? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. The sound of pads cracking. Yep. Did you see the um, the uh, video he posted on Instagram from practice? 
That the diving that, interception. What a play. Yeah. What Sick. a play. And like, you know, a lot of times players when that hand, when your hands go up and the ball hits off, they just they're like, that's a ball on a tee for them to just hit you. Yeah. Um but I and I'm sure that's what Shiloh was originally thinking, but he sure. saw that ball and the had those instincts to go dive and make that play. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, great play from him. Um, sounds like the defense won today overall. Uh, just sounds like they were flying around. Defensive line was making plays, Unk said. So uh, there you go. Saw Shador briefly after practice. Said what's up. He's doing well. Hell yeah. That's our guy. Just so you guys guy. know, there's also a pod poll asking if Trevor Woods should start. We'll hit that at the end of the show as well. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> Let's see what they say. <laughs> Oh, man. What an absolute blast to have practice back. Football being back is a, is a gift. It's a godsend. You know what else is a godsend? Mm, Coors Light. Coors Light. <laughs> the beer made the chill. When you come to I bet Denver... Robert Livingston loves a good Coors Light. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sure he does. Uh, when you come to Denver or Boulder for a spring game or whenever this next year... Um, and you're coming out hanging with us, have a Coors Light in hand. It's the beer made to chill. That's what we're known best for, right? Chilling? Oh, yeah. We do work, we contrary do. to what many people <laughs> think in this chat. But. Even though we might be seven <laughs> minutes late. <laughs> um, we were here. We work hard, play hard, and when we chill, we chill with Coors Light. Come down to the DMVR bar. We have it on tap. We have the silver bullets. When it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer I reach for. When you want to hit reset, grab the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash DMVR. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Legal Pete's. After I've had like six Coors Lights, <laughs> I start calling them Coors Lights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> Just like clicks in my brain. I was like, bartender, Coors Light. There's something else going on in your brain. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, one place you can get a Coors Light is Illegal Pete's. Yeah. And it's... I wore shorts today. I'm trying to manifest patio season. It, I walked out of my apartment this morning on the way to Boulder, or on the way here first, but then to Boulder. It was like 8.45. It was cold, bro. Yes, yeah, there's still a little chill in the air, mm -hmm. but I just love patio season. There's like... Really, any beverage, I believe, is better enjoyed outside. Yep. Uh, I like drinking my coffee outside. I like drinking a Gatorade outside. But I also love drinking a Coors Light <laughs> or a margarita from Illegal Pete's outside on their great patio. So get down to uh, Illegal Pete's this patio season. Enjoy a incredible steak queso burrito or uh, reverse nachos mm -hmm. on their fantastic patios. When it gets real hot, they bust out the misters on yes. the patio. Elite vibes. That's when you. That's when patio season officially arrives. When the misters are turned on. Wow. Yeah. All right. By the way, seventy four on Thursday. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Look, I don't want to put a potential jinx out there, but we're looking really nice as we head towards the end of April here. Really. All really I care nice. about is Thursday and Friday. I need really good. Well, I care oh, about and lots Saturday. Of other What's Saturday? Oh, this week, you mean? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. I just mean, like, if we get great weather on Thursday and Friday, I'll be happy this week. <laughs> I hear you. Um, but shout out to Legal Pete's. Yes, shout out to Legal Pete's. I already did that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I, I took your read and seamlessly morphed it into my read so well that you didn't even realize I got to a new read. I started thinking of the calendar and everything. Yeah, to be fair, like, before the show, you guys were also like, one person was talking and another one was like, wait, what did he say? That's yeah. true. All right. Uh, just a few things to hit before we get out of here. Big 12 Mexico has been delayed. I've never been more disappointed. <laughs> Or, uh, yes. I've never been more disappointed that something I didn't know existed was getting delayed. Because <laughs> uh, I love the Big 12 and I love Mexico. The Big 12 was planning to play baseball, basketball, and soccer games in the country oh. um, in 2024. That only applies to us in one sport. Um, well, right, they were talking women's soccer. Uh, I don't know. Okay. But they were also talking about football as well. Um, they were scheduled to do some of these games this year. 
But it looks like they're pushing him back to 2025. Um, yeah. The Big 12 has been doing a lot of things uh, differently, I guess, than they would have before in the new Big 12 era, the expansion era. This being one of them, trying to expand it to Mexico. Commissioner Yormark talked about it. Um, so we'll see. I want a Buffs road game. I don't want to lose a home game. Mm -hmm. I want a Buffs road game in Mexico. Football. Yeah, say we take it from uh, Tucson, Arizona, because they're closest. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Where would you put it? Tijuana? Juarez? Are they, though? <laughs> what about, what's the southernmost Texas U school? TCU might be actually closer, right? Is Houston Dallas more forward. south than Dallas? I don't know. Our resident geography guy, Adam, Houston's, has left the building. Houston's more east, I know for sure, but I don't know if it's more south. Right, Tucson is really close, so you're probably right there. Um, and I would much rather go to a game in Mexico than in Tucson. Yeah, easily. Um, football might come in 2026, so stay tuned. Can you imagine, dude? It'd be a DNVR road trip to Mexico. <laughs> I know. Oh my god, the amount of tequila that would be <laughs> consumed. Tequila and tacos, man, in Mexico. Let's go. Elite. Yes. Um. Also, huh? Houston is. So maybe Houston or Tucson then would be the one. All right. I kind of want to go to. Houston. I'd rather go to Houston than yeah, Tucson definitely. all day long. Definitely. Um, 247 put out this list. Brad Crawford wrote it predicting every college football or college game day location during the 2024 college football season. Okay. Do you think CU appears on this list? <sighs> Brad Crawford. That's different than Bud Crawford. <laughs> no. What was his name? Oh, Bud Elliott. Oh, well, we don't like that guy. No, I was, I was no, talking no. about our guy last week who oh, uh, um, joined the club. John Orenberger. <laughs> Something like that. Help. He ate the pestle and pestle in and help him out. Uh, I'm looking. I'm trying to find the article. Um, it's okay. We don't need it. I Ostermeyer. Wanna, I, I want to get the guy's name right again, though. It sounds like having, like, high <laughs> Anyways. I didn't take the penicillin. Anyways. Um, did you say you think CU made the list? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I was going to say, if it, I thought I got Bud Elliott and Brad Crawford <laughs> confused for a second. But, uh, uh, two very different people, I can tell you that. Yes. Um, I'm assuming that, that uh, Brad knows more than Bud. And <laughs> yes. uh, we're, going, uh, we're going, yes, the Buffs made the list. You are correct. Can you guess which game? And no, it is not the game you are thinking. I'll just tell you that right off the bat. What game do you think I was thinking? Nebraska. Well, Nebraska's on the road. It still could be oh, a game day. Any site. game. So, yeah. Um, or CSU. <clears throat> I'll say it's not one of those two. I'm going to say Kansas State. Close, man. Oklahoma State. Now you're further. Kansas. Colorado at Kansas. No, 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 no. We are not taking college fucking game day to Arrowhead Stadium. That these are just projections. Don't get too angry with me. I'm here. mad, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> We're not putting college game day at an NFL stadium. That is sacrilegious. <laughs> keep it keep it on campus. I found a, the article. I knew when you brought up the geography of Texas, we were going to get cooked. I mean... We live in Colorado. I know. I barely know Colorado <laughs> geography, if I'm being honest. Um, our guy was Blake Brockermeyer, by the, by the way. Okay, I was pretty close. <laughs> I, I think I said the last one was Oscar Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> um, close, but no cigar, bro. Uh, I'll read off the projected sites real quick. Starting from week one, Clemson <laughs> versus Georgia in Atlanta. What's up? Just all the all caps. Oh. Houston is one of the furthest southern cities in Texas. I was asking for clarification, guys. I know it's not as south as El Paso. Or Harlingen. Harlingen. You should know you should know Texas geography. It's where you were born. Yeah, that's true. I was uh, I moved from Texas before I was even before I logged on to the server. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way to 
<laughs> what a Gen Z saying. <laughs> um, week two, Texas at Michigan. Week three, a lot of big, t- big 10 on this, by the way. Week three, Alabama at Wisconsin. Week four, Utah at Oklahoma State. That's a big 12 matchup. Week five, Georgia at Alabama. Week six, Clemson at Florida State. Does he have blurbs on these? Yeah. All right, I want to hear the blurb for the buffs. Okay. Week seven, Ohio State at Oregon. Week eight, Georgia at Texas. Week nine, Oklahoma at Ole Miss. Week 10, Ohio State at Penn State. Week 11, Alabama at LSU. Week 12, Tennessee at Georgia. Week 13, Colorado at Kansas. Final week of the season, week 14, Michigan at Ohio State. The blurb. There's nothing I can think of that's worse than the idea of being outside at like 6 a.m. at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas in what, late November? November 23rd. Yeah, that's torture. Yeah. With construction continuing at the Jayhawks' home digs in 2024, Kansas will play four of its home games at Arrowhead Stadium. No. And when Coach Prime comes to town in late November, it could be a hard to get ticket if Kansas is the contender. Many believe the Jayhawks could bl- could be. This is a weekend college game day. Could go outside of the box and choose a group of five location two. Liberty is never hosted. Uh, they're just talking about Liberty from there on out. They don't even mention Coach Prime. But they use this photo, of course. Of course. Someone just said Houston is south of El Paso? That is impossible. <laughs> I mean, I, maybe. I, I don't think so. El Paso is like on the southernmost part of the state. That's what I thought. true might just be getting trolled there you go brownsville i've heard that in a rap song any up <laughs> sure <laughs> last thing um very excited to say that uh what? they're right about houston being south of el paso is that for real how it's just technically it is not closer to mexico but technically it is I'm going to have to Now see you're making me pull here. up my, the map app and see what the hell you're talking about. This is great podcasting. Bro, this is... What are you talking about, Yaya? Tech, is what all does the way technically mean? It can either be south, more south or not. I said it is more south. It's just not closer to Mexico. Oh, wait. I was thinking about South Texas. I see you now. Never mind. Oh, it's not, it's, it is more south. It is. Brownsville is definitely the That's, most south. Yes, Brownsville is. Now we know. Yes. Now we know. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, a little Texas geography lesson today on the show. Okay, um, last thing. What I was trying to say. Very excited to say that yesterday when we got the schedule for this week, we were also uh, told that we could attend Zay Weaver's pro day tomorrow. Yes, which is taking place in the IPF tomorrow morning. I think it's pretty sick that Coach Prime is uh, making this happen. Um, you know, obviously he has. Uh, connections <laughs> in the NFL, he can call up and say, hey, you got to come see this kid. Yeah. Um, and not a lot of players get their own pro day in this way. But I think Coach Prime kind of sticking his neck out for a guy that he really loves and respects. Uh, and, you know, obviously they're going to use the IPF and all that stuff and make it happen. Yep, he's going to go through the whole thing. Lifts. Um, it's about an hour and 45-minute workout. We'll be there. Reef says never ask Jake or RK for non-Colorado directions. <laughs> Could not agree more. <laughs> yeah, please never ask also, me for directions. don't ask people for directions anymore. We have phones for yeah, that. Yeah, look it up yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, stoked for tomorrow, man. Can't wait. I do have the pod results real quick, the poll results. All right. Cheryl? Uh, 287 votes. 74% say yes. 25 say no. Whoa. Okay. Did not expect that. All right. Hey. Vocal minority, the Trevor Woods, uh, the anti-Trevor Woods contingent. I mean, that how that works though. The the yes. minority is always the loudest. Yeah, I mean, you you gotta uh, gotta try to get get your point heard. All right, final break here. Shout out to our friends over at Circle K. Uh, the one-stop shop for whatever you need on the road. Whether it's road trips or you're just going down the street, Circle K is the place to stop. You can download their free membership app at the Inner Circle. Uh, scan that QR code on the screen or go to circlek.com slash inner dash circle 
sign up. Your first five Phillips of gas are 25 cents off a gallon. Your first five Polar Pops are free. And every six free on several items, such as pizza, roller grill, dispense beverages, donuts, and more. Get a free any size Polar Pop from Colorado Circle Ks by texting DMVR to 31310. That's DMVR to the number 31310. Message and data rates may apply. Periodic recurring messages per month. Terms and conditions can be viewed at circlek.com. Sign up with the QR code or, again, visit circlek.com slash inner dash circle for more informa- information. Lubbock is very north. <coughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just learning, learning things. Factor meal kits. Shout out to factor meal kits. Um, so tonight I am attending uh, a buddy of mine is putting on this, like, cool kind of, like, pop-up dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's called Grilled Cheese Night because it's like something he started with his friends back in the day and now he's like turning it into a thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm super proud of him, super stoked. Some of you know him, Will Whalen. Good buff. Anyways, yeah. that Fun means guy. that I'm going to consume a lot of carbs tonight. Let's go. And I'm excited for it. But tomorrow, uh-huh. I'm getting on the factor grind. Um, maybe for like a whole year. At least till football season. Wow. I'm tapping in, getting on the grind. I love it. Going to use Factor to uh, guide me on my diet. And Factor is the best way to do it because I, I find to be the hardest part of staying on a diet, like not having food ready and then you just get hungry and yep. you're like, ah, I'll just DoorDash something. Right. Uh, and there's not usually very many healthy options on DoorDash. Factor is perfect because they send you a box every week of, you know, essentially – TV dinners, but they're not frozen. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just put them in the fridge and they're just ready for you. And, you know, you can pick between, I think, four, six, eight, twelve 12 sent to you per week, depending on how many you think you're going to need. Uh, but they're great. Get like grilled chicken, vegetables, good sauces on there. Uh, so check out our friends over at Factor Meals and use the code DNVR Buffs 50. DNVR Buffs 50 for 50% off. Great deal from our friends over at Factor Meals. Uh, we love them. They are goaded. All right, let's go to the Toyota chat. Let's run through some of these questions and let's get out of here. When we, when you say dubs in the chat, are you going to say dubs in the Toyota chat now? You got to remember that one. Yeah, I'm going to have to remember. <laughs> what were you saying, Yo-Yo? Uh, Super Chats first. Super Chats first from Tay. I wonder if my Lakers can make an offer for Caitlin Clark. She shoots better than the whole team already. <laughs> Good Dude, Lord, man. She was insane last night. Unbelievable performance. Yeah. I thought that uh, yeah, I thought they were awesome. Uh, the game was awesome. Yeah, both you got a shrug from both uh, Angel Reese and, and Haley Van. Van They're yep. just like, I, what are we supposed to do? Yep. Uh, when Caitlin's on like that, there's nothing you can do. And like I said yesterday, it's, it's so Steph Curry like. It really just like looks mm-hmm. like Steph Curry, feels like Steph Curry. Yep. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. Um, that was electric. What an awesome night of women's basketball last night. And I think, I don't know, I, for some reason, I just enjoy watching Paige Beckers more. Like, her game is so smooth. Mm-hmm. And she was kind of like the original. And yep. she got hurt. Yep. I'm excited for that matchup. I think I'm going to be pulling for UConn, though. I don't know which way I'm going. I had a lot of fun watching Iowa last night, though. That was such a high-level basketball game. It really was. It was a ton of fun. Kim Mulkey's getting killed for her uh, defensive game plan. Yeah. Apparently, also, HVL was, like, getting an IV because she was sick, and she had to chase around Caitlin Clark all night. <laughs> yeah. Did you see what uh, Flo J said about uh, Angel Reese after the game? Dude, you know what I was thinking while I was watching that? And I think that everyone should think about this. It's like, do you have someone in your life who would stand up for you in this way? Because everyone Dude. deserves to. Yes. Like, what a – speech what a friend yeah what a teammate um everyone needs someone in their life that is willing to stand up for them in front of people in that way yeah that was really cool to see that was probably my favorite moment yep from yesterday altogether it was awesome what's up uh what else we got oh mr hillsman with the super chat salute everyone salute everyone at dmvr even those behind the scenes thank you thank you so much mr hillsman uh, do you want the super sticker? Yeah, I'll get a big TZ super sticker today. Sheba Dog laughing slightly while blushing and covering his mouth with one arm. <laughs> we love a doge. Good doge. 
All right, what's up? Jake, um, when are you dropping another article? Tonight. Um, Ooh. Talked to Dylan Edwards' coach last week. Uh, just got to get it all formatted and all that stuff. So Great. Later tonight. We look forward to it. Uh, Eric, when are we getting Coach Sapp at the podium? Um, we'll I, see. I've never seen a GA at the podium, <laughs> and that does not mean it won't happen here. Yep. Because last year we got... We got Pat Shermer. He was an analyst, though. Yep. But And then uh, I guess that's a, a, a bit of news. It was originally posed as, like, senior defensive analyst or something. Uh, then Brian yesterday came out and said it's actually a GA role because GAs can work on the field with the players, whereas analysts cannot. Um, we're, I'm still trying to learn. I asked today. I didn't get a clear answer. Okay. So, in the end, I don't think I care. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Um, what my guess would be, Warren Sapp way overqualified to be a graduate assistant. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, there's sometimes where you have someone in a certain role, but because of their stature or whatever you want to call their resume, you give them a a fancier title. Yeah. And I think that would be appropriate in this, um, in this situation, but they do have to wiggle into the NCAA rules to make sure that they can use coach sap and coach sap can use his abilities to help these players the most. Exactly. They're um, at least for now until they hopefully lift the restrictions. Exactly. So once that law change or rule change, whatever that comes through, I think we'll actually get clarification what his title is then. Cause I think they're waiting on that to determine if he, if and how often he can be or at all on the field to coach. Right. So right. that's what they're waiting for. But like, for example, there've been like people that want to help our company mm -hmm. and they're like, I'm willing to do it for free. If X, Y, and Z, but we're not going to give this person who's like a former CEO, like an intern right. label, you right. know, we're going right. to call them like, director of this that or the other thing you know it's like mm. but there's you know so that's i think a little bit of what's happening here um did we do ivan's oh, no, no, i'm yeah, sorry, oh, sorry ivan we just lost it bro <laughs> surfer boy uh guys who else is hearing good things about the sophomore qb at spring thus far i haven't heard a single thing about Colorado State, and I like it that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, Justin will be live on Thursday. You can ask him then. <laughs> tap in, I guess. <laughs> Not everyone else, though. Don't just tap in to be mean to Justin. Yeah. Be nice to my guy, <laughs> please. Uh, Ivan's comment is back. Do you guys think T. Woods will be playing on Sundays? Got to think that is yes. Um, I think he has a chance for sure. I think that he's got to figure out what position he's playing first. Yeah, I mean, probably not. I don't know. Like... That's a tough being a tweener already. Um, but I, I think maybe like he could become a special teams player and work his way up from there. I mean, he's a Texas kid. He played high school football at the highest level. He's playing Power 5 football. It wouldn't surprise me to see him playing on Sundays. Yeah. I've just done this long enough to realize how hard it is to make it to the NFL. Fair enough. Um, and a lot of players – like. Honestly, Nate Landman is a exception to the rule. Um, I thought he was going to be one of those guys who I end up being like, man, what a great football player. I can't believe it didn't work for him in the NFL. Mm -hmm. He got his opportunity, absolutely clutched onto it with everything he has and hasn't let it go. Yeah. But, for example, from that <clears throat> same team, there were people that thought Carson Wells was the more NFL yep. type of player. Carson Wells, is, I don't think, has ever played a snap in the NFL. He's in the and UFL. now he's in the UFL. So it's so, so, so hard to make it to the NFL. How about Zay Weaver? Yep. During the season, we were like, dude, this guy could be a day two pick. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, hopefully the pro day can change things for him. But now he's not even being mentioned as a drafted player. Yeah, I saw it's someone. so hard to make the NFL. Someone mentioned Steve Smith's uh, podcast in the comments. That's like the only... Buzz. Pop I've yeah. seen for him this entire draft season. Love that, though. Yeah. I mean, that's a great guy to get it from. Yep. D Mills asked, is Shador going to throw for Zay? I do not know. Um, hope so. I hope so, too. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. 
I mean, there's not going to be another quarterback. Right. They didn't have Shador throw at the pro day because they were giving Blake Stenstrom yes, he threw the for, opportunity to throw. Yeah. Maybe. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Eric, last one. If you could have one place for the rest of your life, which would it be? Illegal Pete's or Saucy Southern? Illegal Pete's. Pete's. Uh, all due respect but, to Saucy yeah, Southern, though. I mean, that's a a win both ways, honestly. Hit us with a few likes. We're four away from 300. Love to see it. All right. Um, hit that like button. Also subscribe to the podcast. We'll be back tomorrow. Um, again, we've got stuff. Everything that from today is on the YouTube channel. All the press conferences, the takeaways with Uncle Neely. Uh, Unc said he will be willing to come down, I believe, on Thursday after practice. Okay. So, are you here? I won't be here. Okay. I'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> 310, let's go. 310, there you go. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you. Um, but, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. See you then. Sco Buffs. Sco Buffs. Mm-hmm. Like the mayor, 